Hi, this session we're going to talk about speed and velocity. We have three goals. The first is simply to discuss speed and velocity and really to see how they're different. Our second goal is to talk about average values and how to calculate average values of speed, in other words average speed, and average velocity. And thirdly, we'll learn about how to find instantaneous values of speed and velocity and uh, one way we're going to do that is we're uh, going to investigate graphs and how to find speed and velocity, among other things, from a graph. So think about how you would define speed and how you would define velocity. Out on the street, a lot of people use these two words, speed and velocity, interchangeably. But we are much more careful about how we use them because we know they're actually not quite the same thing. Okay, so speed is a scalar that represents how fast an object is traveling. Velocity, on the other hand, is a vector. So it combines the speed with the direction of motion. Okay? Another way to define velocity is, is as the rate of change of position. If you look at the speed at a particular instant, well, it is the magnitude of the velocity at that instant. Here's an example. You might be traveling down the road in your car at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. If you would state your velocity, then you would say, I'm traveling at 50 kilometers per hour north. So combine your direction with your speed and you've got a velocity. How about average speed and average velocity? And when we say average, we usually mean averaged over time. Okay? So average speed is defined as some quantity, we'll have to think about which quantity it is, divided by the total time. Average velocity is also some quantity over the total time. Or we can say um, in a more compact form, V with a bar on top. So V with a bar on top, uh, anything with a bar on top represents an average, equals something, and our time interval is delta T. So something over delta T is our average velocity. Okay, so what is what? Well, the average speed is actually the total distance covered divided by the total time. So you're moving in some way, you just figure out how far you have gone, divided by the total time, that's your average speed. Your average velocity, on the other hand, is your net displacement. The magnitude of the net displacement may or may not be equal to the total distance traveled. If there were any changes in direction at all, then your net displacement is smaller than your, the uh, magnitude of your net displacement is smaller than your total distance. Only if there's no change in direction will the magnitude of the net displacement be equal to the total distance. So in a more compact form, V with a bar on top, average velocity, is delta x, remember that's our expression for displacement, delta x, divided by delta t. Okay, so let's look at a particular example. Okay? So in this example, we have a displacement of 10 meters to the right, followed by a displacement of 4 meters to the left, followed by a third displacement of 8 meters to the right. And this all takes place in a total time of 10 seconds. So let's try and calculate the average speed in this case. So all we've got to do is figure out the total distance covered. At least that's a good place to start. So we don't have to worry about what direction we're going in because it's just distance. So we just add up these distances, 10 plus 4 plus 8, to get a total distance of 22 meters. We've covered that in 10 seconds, or average speed is the total distance divided by the time, 22 meters over 10 seconds. That's, on average, we went 2.2 meters per second. Let's look at the same situation, but now we're going to calculate the average velocity. Now, when we do the net displacement, we have to worry about the fact that these displacements are not all in the same direction. Okay? Now, this is a one-dimensional example, which makes it a little bit easier. So, in this case, we can say to the right is positive, 
to the left is negative. So we can add up our displacements like this with a plus or the minus sign indicating the direction of the displacement. So we have plus 10 meters. Subtract off this 4 meter displacement to the left and then we add on the 8 meter displacement to the right. That's in a positive direction too. So our net displacement is actually 14 meters to the right or positive 14 meters. We divide that by our 10 seconds to find our average velocity. On average, we are traveling at positive 1.4 meters per second. Okay? So remember, in fact, that the average speed is higher than the average velocity in this particular case. And again, that's because there was a change of direction partway through the motion. In fact, two changes in direction. Started out going right, then we were going left, then we went right again. Okay? That's one dimension, how you do it. And you can generalize to more than one dimension. And average speed is always pretty straightforward. Just figure out the sum of all the individual distances in each part of the trip, add them up. The net displacement is trickier, especially when you get beyond one dimension. Okay. Okay, well, sometimes we want to know about instantaneous values. How fast and maybe in what direction are you traveling at a particular instant. So that's either the instantaneous speed, how fast you're going at that instant, and the instantaneous velocity, how fast you're going and in what direction are you traveling. So if you're driving in your car, do you have anything in your car you can use to tell you your instantaneous speed? Here's another question. If you drive from Boston to New York City, what might you use to find your average speed for the trip? And if you happen to pass a trooper on the mass pike and they get you on the radar gun, what are they interested in? Your average speed or your instantaneous speed? So in your car, obviously you have your speedometer to tell you what your instantaneous speed is. So that's exactly what it's for. It's a meter that measures your instantaneous speed. On the other hand, to find your average speed, what you need to know is total distance covered divided by total time. Do you have anything in your car that tells you the distance covered? Sure. You got your odometer. Combine that with your watch or your clock, and that'll tell you the time. Divide the distance by the time to find your average speed. And then, if you pass the state trooper, the state trooper is interested in how fast you're going right now at the instant he nails you with his radar gun. So that's your instantaneous speed. Now, how do we um, define mathematically instantaneous values of speed and velocity? So remember, here's our average velocity equation. V average is delta x over delta t. So the instantaneous velocity, well, this is getting a little complicated. V with a little arrow on top, that's our vector V, is the limit of delta x over delta t as delta t approaches zero. Okay, so that's kind of a calculus uh, way to define things, but that's what it is. And of course, the instantaneous speed is the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. If you're looking just at one instant, then the time interval is so small that you, there can be no changes in direction. So the instantaneous speed is always the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. Your time in interval has to be small enough that it cannot include changes of direction. Okay, now this is a pretty complicated definition of instantaneous velocity, right? So, we're usually going to do this another way. And we'll use graphs to do it. So, see what you think uh, is the best way to fill in the blanks in these sentences. So, thinking about a graph of position as a function of time. The instantaneous velocity is the something at a particular instant on a position versus time graph. Well, it turns out that it is the slope. Okay? So you graph position versus time, get the slope, you get your instantaneous velocity. Take the magnitude, you get your instantaneous speed. In a similar way, we can find displacement from a velocity versus time graph. Now here's a hint, it's a much longer uh, section in the sentence here. So we're looking for a phrase here, not just a word. So the displacement is the area under the curve for a particular time interval on a velocity versus time graph. So we're going to investigate these ideas, see how we can get displacement and velocity from various graphs. 
Okay, so remember, we just said this. We look at the slope, but the position versus time graph, that'll tell us the instantaneous velocity. So let's have a look at a particular um, scenario. Let's say the velocity is constant. And if, it, if that's true, then the slope of the position versus time graph must be constant as well. Okay? So here we have a truck traveling at constant speed. The graph of uh, sorry position versus time is shown for this truck, and you can see also a little red bar on this graph, which has a constant slope, and that is actually the slope of that red piece is the instantaneous velocity. So you can see as the car moves steadily along here, uh, we're covering a total distance of 30 meters in 10 seconds. So in fact, the uh, velocity is in the positive direction, and it's got a value of. 30 meters divided by 10 seconds plus 3 meters per second. Okay. Now let's try another case. In this particular case, the velocity is going to change. But what we're going to do is we're going to have an acceleration which is constant. The acceleration is the time rate of change of velocity. And so if the acceleration is constant, the slope of the position graph changes in a steady way, in fact, if the acceleration is constant. So here we have our truck starts at rest and then speeds up at a steady rate. And you can see on the graph that the position versus time, the slope of it, increases, increases, increases. The slope of that red bar at the end of it steadily increases. Okay? So here we cover 25 meters in 10 seconds. So we could do an average velocity here of plus 25 meters divided by 10 seconds, plus 2.5 meters per second. But the instantaneous velocity is only plus 2.5 meters per second at one particular time. Okay, zero at the beginning. And five meters per second at the end. Okay, let's talk about velocity versus time graph. Now we're gonna look at areas under curves. So, we'll do our two examples, constant velocity and then constant acceleration. So if the velocity is constant, then it's a pretty easy graph to draw. Then, because the velocity just has one value the whole time. So, here we have our truck going at a constant rate of three meters per second for this whole 10 second interval. And so the area here is just a rectangle. So you go you draw the, the uh, velocity versus time, that's this dark red line, all the way across the three meters per second. And then you shade underneath that line all the way down to the axis. And you find the area of that rectangle. Now, area of a rectangle is a piece of cake to find, right? So, area of a rectangle is just the length, 10 seconds, times the uh, width, which is three meters per second. And that's your displacement, the area under the curve, your velocity versus time graph. So in this case, you get a displacement of three meter plus three meters per second times your 10 seconds plus 30 meters. Okay. Now we'll do the situation where the acceleration is constant. Now in this case, the truck picks up speed at a constant rate starting from rest. Okay, so velocity steadily increases, increases linearly with time. That's what a constant acceleration is all about. So velocity starts at zero, when it, or at the end, it's five meters per second. Our average velocity, remember we calculated that a few minutes ago for this case, average velocity was 2.5 meters per second. It's only 2.5 meters per second instantaneous velocity at t equals five seconds, in fact. It's higher than that after that, it's lower than that before that. So to find the displacement from this graph, we find the area of this triangular region. So the area of a triangle, we remember, is one half the base times the height. So the base here is our 10 seconds. Our height of our triangle is five meters per second. So we get one half, that's from the half that's in the half base times height equation, times five meters per second, plus five meters per second, in fact, times 10 seconds, that gets us half of 50, which is plus 25 meters. So our displacement in this particular case is 25 meters. So that's how you can use graphs to find velocity, instantaneous velocity, and average velocity if you have displacement position versus time graphs, 
And if you have velocity versus time graphs, you can do areas under curves to find displacement. So graphs like this are really very, very useful. Okay, I think that is all for today.